Okay. Uh, I think we're live. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this hacktorial on Django. Uh, I I asked earlier um, if anyone would come to the last hacktorial. Um, I don't think anyone has. If you had, um, we'd be building all those concepts. If you haven't, uh, this is still a good time for you to learn about Django. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is learning about the uh, the basics of Django. So first, the conceptual underpinnings of the framework. Uh, what it does, what it can do, and what are some of, what is some of the philosophy behind it, and why it was designed, and then we're going to build a simple blog app that will allow you, uh, someone to essentially add some blog posts that will then show on our homepage. Um, and then I think my my goal is to have another one of these in the probably next week um, and build some much more advanced concepts. Uh, so starting with what Django is, Django is a Python framework. Uh, that essentially allows you to build dynamic sites. Um, it's comparable to, for example, Ruby on Rails, uh, certain PHP frameworks as well that you might have worked with, uh, like Laravel. Um, so, okay, so let me ask you guys, um, what is your understanding of how the web works? Like, for example, when you go to a website and you put in the URL, what exactly happens? Does someone want to explain, like, their understanding of it? Okay, uh, no, no, no volunteers. Uh, so basically, what's happening is that your browser is going to. Okay, so it's going to. It's basically going to map that URL to a server, um, and essentially, it's going to ask that server to send some information back. It's going to send some ser information to the server and then ask for information back. If you want to build a really simple website, you can just do an HTML. You just build the HTML, and with a really like, I mean, you can use like Apache or something for a very basic server. Um, and then doing that, all it'll do is just serve the HTML, which is directly showing your browser. But as we all know, the internet is more than just simple HTML pages. There's a lot of dynamic content to it. For example, Facebook doesn't look the same every single time you log in, even though the URL is the same. And you can't do that with just HTML. So the idea of frameworks like Django is to enable you to make your website interactive. So let, uh, so what we're gonna so we're gonna like keep that in mind as we go through our Django project. Uh, so open up some kind of um, command line or terminal. Um, for this first step, you can actually just use your file explorer. Uh, what we're gonna do is create some kind of directory where we want to where we want to put our Django project. Um, I've put it in document slash projects. As you can see, that's where I keep all of my various code things uh, projects. Um, so once you're all there, you can open up in your file explorer. You can open it in terminal or com um, command line if you know how to use that. Uh, just what you're going to do is, again, I'm assuming everyone's good with setup. You're going to enter Django. Oops. All right. Uh, yeah, you want to start up your virtual end first. So again, I'm assuming setup is good. So we're going to create a new virtual environment. The point of the virtual environment is when you're working with Python, Python has a lot of different packages that you're going to be using. Uh, and it helps to essentially store all these packages in one place for each project and switch between those environments as you switch between projects so you don't lead to uh, dependency issues, essentially, where, yeah. So when you're using different versions of the same package for different projects. Uh, so how that works is you're going to do mk virtual m, so make virtual m, and then you're going to name it something, okay? So, I mean, we're building a blog, so I don't know, name it like n. Django blog or something like that. Okay, that's automatically going to set everything up for you. Uh, if you had installed everything um, correctly as per the setup I had written up, uh, it should be using per, uh, Python version three plus. Um, and then it's also going to enter you into the virtual web, as you can see there, right here, and Django blog. Uh, normally, though, once you've created one, if you wanted to enter it, for example, if I open up a new tab. The way you do that is work on, and then the name of the the name of the thing. So you can do you can do it that way as well. Once you've already created a virtual environment, going back to this. Now that you're in the virtual environment, we're going to install Django because I need it. Um, so just do that, And that'll put Django not in like with the rest of your Python packages as would normally happen if it wasn't in a virtual environment. It'll put it within your virtual environment. So again, everything's compartmentalized. 
Is everything, is everyone good? Does anyone need a minute? Um, so, did you set up the, uh, did you, did you set, set it up as I'd written up in the, the GitHub gist that I put on the page? Uh, if you go to the Facebook invite page, I think it's like the second or third, uh, third post I'd made there. I'd written up just this instruction. So make sure you go through that. Um, yeah. Sorry, changing what? Yeah, um, so suppose you just open up a new terminal tab and you already had a virtual environment, but you weren't working on it. You can just write work on and then the name of it. Yeah, um, yeah. And that you can create as many as you want. Like if you want to see, like these are all the ones I have. Excuse the past. Okay. Um, so if you need help with that, uh, try going through that gist. I'm assuming you haven't seen that yet. Um, and I'll try to help you uh, soon. Just give me a minute. Um, I want to set this up first, though. Okay. So everyone installed Django otherwise, though, right? Other than, yeah, he just came in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create our first Django project. So you want to do Django admin.py create project. And we're going to do like name the project whatever you want. You can I'm just going to call it Django blog. Um, sorry, start project. Uh, so if we go into that directory, it should create a directory for you now called Django blog or whatever you called it. Uh, let's go into that. You can use CD or you can just double click if you're using it. Yes. Yeah. It's it worked. Okay. Yeah. If you need me to slow down, just let me know. I don't mind. I think I budgeted more than enough time for this. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what's what's like been created for us by Django admin.py, which is just like the general this general script you're going to use for all your starting all of your Django projects. Okay, so you're going to see a, another directory called Django blog within it, and then manage.py. Manage.py contains a whole bunch of very useful commands you're going to use throughout your Django project uh, for. All kinds of different things. Um, you're going to make it use a lot, and it's basically all like put together in one file for your use. Django blog is your first applica application. So essentially, how a Django project is imposed is you're going to have different apps living within within it, um, and it creates one for you that's also like the name of your project automatically. You can make more later on by using this command. Um, And then the name of the thing, but we're not going to do that just yet. Um, okay, so let's look inside the Django blog application, see what's there. Um, so you see an init.py file. All that is is in Python when you want a when you want a essentially you want the file to be recognized as a module. You're going to put it init.py. There's not much there that you need to worry about. Uh, what is important to us is settings and URLs, um, and I'll go over this in a minute. And wsgi.py is essentially how your Django project is going to interface with your server. We eventually set that up. Uh, we're not going to go into server config uh, in this factorial, but that will be important like, later on when you want to eventually deploy your Django application to the web. So let's take a look at settings. I'm just going to open this up in Sublime, which is a text editor I like. You can just open up any text editor you want um, to take a look at it. So once everyone has that open, uh, just I'll give you a few minutes just to uh, do that. I want to help him out. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. Well, that'll do the job. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. We're back. Uh, okay. So let's take a look at what's inside the settings.py file. You're going to have some basic con configuration stuff for your entire project. Uh, this file is very useful. It has a lot of important stuff. Um, OK, so if you look at this line, debug equals true. Uh, when you eventually deploy your uh, Django project to the web, you're going to want to turn this off. But when it's on, it's true. Uh, what it essentially allows you to do is it gives you a bunch of de debug information when things go wrong, and that's useful. Obviously, that's not secure to put that on the web, so you want to change that before you deploy. Um, so we talked earlier about how Django object, uh, uh, Django application is, sorry, Django project is grouped into applications. Uh, Django comes with these applications already there. Yeah, technically, you don't have to use any of these, but they're very useful. Uh, and we'll be going over two of them, admin and auth, today. And whenever you create a new application, you're just going to want to have to, you're going to have to add it here. So for example, if we create an application called blog post, which we will, you would do that. Don't do that yet, though, just for your information. Um, OK. Middleware, you don't really need to worry about right now. Um, Templates, we're going to go over in a little bit. Um, so databases. Uh, I had you guys install SQL Lite 3, unless it was already pre-installed in your system, which it is for a lot of computers. Um, so this basically is the database you're going to be working with, because obviously one of the great things about website, websites is they have data persistence, which means that uh, you can store stuff and you can come back and it won't have disappeared. right? Um, and that doesn't necessarily happen if you just run a Python program. That stuff doesn't, like once a Python program ends, obviously the data doesn't persist. So you're going to need a database for that. Um, yeah, so uh, time zone. Uh, let's change that to, actually, you know what, let's just leave it as UTC. It's fine. UTC is uh, universal something, something. <laughs> uh, what's it? Uh, it is, uh, well, no, because the difference is London time does have daylight savings, whereas UTC uh, doesn't, yeah. Uh, Anyway, you can just leave that as that for now. Um, you can change it later, but that depends on your specific, like your, the specific needs of your project. So we're going to leave that alone for now. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Um, so, so there's. Remember how we talked about how um, a website is going to have dynamic pages. For example, when you go to Facebook, it's going to load different stuff each time. That's dynamic. But there's also static stuff. And a lot of static stuff is stuff that's not HTML. It's CSS, for example. It's images. Those things don't really change. You can technically use Django to make those things dynamic, but 95% of the time, there's no need for that. Uh, so there's different ways of serving static content. Uh, and that's largely outside the realm of Django. Uh, but when we're dealing with, when we're just working on our own computers, Django is a very lightweight uh, way of us serving those static files. So there's two things you have to set in order for that to work. First is your static URL, and that's in your browser where those static, uh, where those static files are going to show up. So set it to static like this, slash static slash. Um, and the idea is that all your static files will be served from that URL. Uh, the other thing you need to do is add a static root. Well, actually, OK, hold on. We're going to use something called static files dears instead. So just copy this. Uh, the idea here is static files dears is a list of directories within your file structure that you, the Django project will look for static files in. So what this is saying is OS is, is just a Python module that's a basic part of the Python language. Uh, and it's basically joining base dear, which is a variable we defined earlier, uh, as the directory in which your Django blog is. And we're appending that with static here. So it's essentially saying, uh, if you look at where my project is, is project slash Django blog 
that is base deer, and then you're appending static to the end. So that's what that says, basically. So just copy the down. I'm going to zoom in in case it helps you guys. Here. And say you want multiple uh, directories where you want to put static files, you can change that. So this stuff is only for your local server. Uh, later on, I mean, when you're actually in in the wild, so to uh, so to speak, uh, you're not going to want to serve static files like this most of the time. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. Here, it's right here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, all right, so one of the reasons we're using SQL Lite is because it's super lightweight. Uh, we don't have to do any extra configuration, uh, but it's also not a great database for actual production use. So uh, and you'd have to change these settings here uh, later on, but for SQL Lite, what's there is good. So you can leave it like that. All right, so we're going to start working on actually showing something. Uh, so the first command you want to run is go back into the root uh, directory where your manage.py file is. So that's here, the top. Um, and you're going to run python manage.py migrates. Everyone on the same page? And then you're going to hit enter. Sorry? Yeah, so uh, if you're inside your virtual end, you can just use Python because it, when you create your virtual end, you set it to Python 3. So when th what that's basically doing is uh, for each of the applications that are inside this, uh, this list right here, it's going to essentially create the tables in the database. For those of you who are familiar with SQL and so on, uh, this will make a little more sense to you. It's essentially creating the tables in the database uh, for those applications. That will make a little more sense when we write our own application with its models and so on. Okay. So everyone good with that? Okay, uh, so now what we're going to do is actually run our application. So what you're going to type is python manage.py run server and then hit enter. Should give you something like this. Oh right, uh, should give you that. That's just give that for me because. It should give you something like this. Is everyone seeing that? Okay. Uh, are you on the same page yet? You're not. Okay. So, so everyone see this URL that's right there? It's one, two, it's, it looks like a bunch of numbers. Uh, oops. Don't. Yeah, okay. Not bad. Copy that. Control Shift C if you're on a Linux and paste it. Paste it into your browser. Just go to any browser and paste it. Should see this. Congratulations. Okay, your first change. Okay. Okay. Um, so, 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 so
Okay, so um, this just basically says your Django server is, your local server is working. Uh, so Django essentially includes a very lightweight server for uh, testing things out on your computer. You're not going to be using this server when you actually deploy because it's not secure. It's certainly not fast. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is write our URLs. And so what this uh, basically does is tell Django, when someone puts in a URL, where do I go, where do I look, and what do I return? Uh, so in order to do that, let's go back to our, let's go back here. I'm going to open up a new tab, uh, a new terminal, sorry, a new tab. You can just exit out of the, okay, so what's happening here, your server's running, right? You can exit out by pressing Control C, or you can just leave it running and just open a new tab. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I prefer to open a new tab because it's, because I'm lazy. Uh, okay, so... If you go back to our root directory uh, and you go back into the, the application called Django blog, right? Remember, there were a bunch of files here, and one of them is urls.py. Do you guys see that? Uh, you want to exit out of the server that's running right here. Uh, the server that was running here. Remember, uh, we started that server with run server, uh, and you can exit out by pressing Control C, or you can just open a new tab or a new window. <laughs> You'd have to restart your virtual environment by doing uh, work on like this, work on uh, like that. Yeah, otherwise it won't work. That's why it might just be easier for you guys just to control C out of it. It's up to you. Either way, just make sure you're in the virtual environment whenever you're doing anything. Okay, so again, looking at this, we see our URLs.py file. So we're going to open up URLs.py in our text editor of choice. You can do that through the terminal, the command line, or you can just open up your file explorer, however you want. So let's take a look. Um, so it sets up a very basic uh, set of URLs for us. The only one there is actually the admin site, which we'll be using in a little bit. And this gives you a little information on how to set it up. OK, so uh, let's think about this from the perspective of the Django application. Uh, so when the server sends a request, it knows what URL wants. So what it's going to do is go to the URLs.py file in the main application, which in our case is this, Django blog, which is also within the project called Django blog. And it's going to go through this list. For those who are not too familiar with Python, uh, this is a data structure called a list. And it's going to go through each one of these. And what this is, is you have a Django utility method called URL, which builds a URL out of certain arguments. Uh, and we're going to go over what those possible URLs are. So it's going to take the URL that you sent it to the server, which might be, for example, uh, it might just be the slash, right? So the home page is just nothing. There's nothing in the end, just a slash or possibly no slash. It might be, for example, uh, www.djangoblog slash blog slash. So we send it that blog slash at the end. Whatever you want, essentially. Uh, and it's going to match it to this and then do some stuff with it. And the way it matches is using regular expressions. So um, who here is familiar with regular expressions? Some degree. OK. Um, so regular expressions are extremely powerful. Uh, for what we're doing today, we, we only need to know a very small subset of it. Um, so what regular expressions allow you to do is instead of just matching specific text, for example, specific letters to letters, it allows you to match patterns. Uh, so if I wrote up a, just a really simple. 
project's guide. Okay, so these are some of the stuff that you might use in regular expressions. Um, there's probably more, but this covers most of it anyway. Um, okay, so if you look at this, uh, essentially, uh, let's take a look at the one, the single URL that is written for us. And let's take a look at what it says. Uh, the R is just telling, it's not too important, it's just telling Python this is string literal. Um, there's different types of strings in Python. Just don't worry about that. Just know that you have to put that in. Um, so the caret, if we look here. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I think I am missing that, actually. Give me a second. Yeah, OK. Actually, you know what? This is like, these are really all the symbols that you actually need today. Um, so the caret is essentially matching the beginning of the text. So we look here and we see that it matches the beginning of the text, everything after the actual domain. So from the .com or the .io or the .org or whatever. Um, so it matches the beginning of that. And it's just, these are just letters. They mean just, they're just letters, right? They're not, uh, they don't mean anything other than that. Um, then you have your slash, which is just a slash. Um, and here, if we don't put a dollar sign because we don't want it to terminate. We're saying anything that starts with this send it to a different URLs file, right? So let's write our own URL first. So um, based on what I just told you about regular expressions, how would you write a regular expression for just a home page? Sorry? Did someone say something? Yeah. I think somebody copyright index. Uh, you could, and that's a, that's a that is used in some some web frameworks where you'd write index for the home page. But suppose you just want like nothing. Just for example, Facebook.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so the caret means the beginning of the string, and then the dollar sign is going to mean the end of the string. Uh, that's your home page. And what you're going to write next, the rest of the URL function can take a number of different arguments. Okay. So you can do a couple of things. You can then send it to a different URLs file. Uh, it's URL conf is the Django term. So that's what this does. Somewhere in the Django uh, Django code source code, there's something. Co there's a project called admin with within it called site that has a URLs file. Um, so you can do that, but that's not really what we want to do right now. We're just going to send it directly to a view. So what a view is is essentially that URL is going to go to a function. It's just a function. If you know Python functions, you know what it, I mean. That's what a view is. Um, and that view is eventually going to return the response that will be sent back to the user. So then you essentially complete the complete the circuit, so to speak, uh, from the user sends it goes to that given URL, goes to the um, the function, and then it returns back to the user. So um, let's see, we can just call it a homepage, for example, right? Uh, but we're obviously going to have to actually write this. Um, yeah, okay. Actually, you know what, before we do that, um, let's actually write our view so that you can see how the view actually looks. Let's create a new file. Uh, we're going to save it as, just save it immediately as you want to go into, back into your, yeah, go into where your uh, URLs.py file is, the same directory. It's the application called Django Hacktorial, and you want to create a file called views.py. Oh, Oh, there already is a views.py file. It's probably, hold on. My bad. That's that's a different project. Okay, yeah. Create a new. Um, So I've already written this before. I'm just going to copy it over, and we're going to walk through essentially what it does. Um, I'm going to put this in Django blog, Django blog, views.py. OK. OK, so this is going to be a views.py file. Um, let's get rid of this for a second. And I'm going to comment this out. Delete this. Yeah, we can delete this too. All right, here's a really skeletal views.py file. Um, and essentially, 
when you've used that py file, you're gonna have various functions that take a request object. And there's a type, there's a class in the Django framework uh, that's called an HTTP response. And that's essentially, uh, essentially what's gonna happen is you're gonna get fed a request object that contains various types of metadata about the request that was sent to your server. Uh, and then you're eventually going to return, need to return an object of type HTTP response. So the easiest way of creating one is just to put a string inside it. So let's try that. We're just going to create a basically hello world app, right? So if you put hello world inside of your HTTP response, Uh, we haven't set up the admin page yet. Uh, if you wanted to go to it, again, if you're running your server, you can just go do slash admin. So it's included within Django. One of the uh, great things about Django is that it has a batteries included philosophy, which means it comes with a lot of uh, essentially tools that in other frameworks you'd have to build out yourself. One of the reasons it specifically includes admin is because Django is originally designed actually for newspapers, uh, that's where it took off. So this is very convenient for people who um, essentially write newspaper websites to easily add articles and so on. That's something yeah, in fact, you can even replace it. You can build your own admin site if you want. If you think that the Django site, I mean, it's very customizable, but if there are certain needs that you need, you can just override it altogether. Did you have a question? Or? OK, sorry. Uh, does it make sense so far? Uh, what we've done, we've created a views method. Uh, we've created a view as a method, essentially. And it's serving this as a response. OK, so to go back to the urls.py file, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put here a, essentially, we're going to tell it which view to serve. So we're going to, we need to first import this, right? So if we look at the file structure here, uh, they're both in Django blog. So what we can do is from dot import views. Okay, and that's just, if you guys aren't familiar with Python or you're not familiar with this specific way of writing it, it's interesting, from the directory this is inside, import the file called views. Uh, and then we're gonna write views dot, and then we called it home page, or you can call it whatever you want, but just make it consistent. Sorry? So the actual function we wrote in views.py, which is in, sitting in the same directory as urls.py. We wrote it inside the file called views.py, and then we named the function homepage, and then we're just saying that's where that is to this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it is not recognizing it explicitly. I had to specifically tell it where it is by importing it, right? So you can put it anywhere you want, you just have to write the import statement accordingly. Uh, yeah, essentially. So, okay. Yeah, we're, uh, that's a good question. Actually, the way I wrote this is that I wrote the HTTP response as just text, and it's just going to serve text, and we'll see that in a second. But later on, we're going to build on top of this. This is just a very basic uh, way of doing it. So now let's start up our, um, Okay, start up your server again using the same thing. If you never exit out of it, which I didn't, you don't need to start again. But again, uh, just as a reminder, the command is python manage.py run server. Uh, and then you want to go back to here. Let's go here. Okay. So you should see this. Uh, other people who don't see this. Yeah, what do you see? Did everyone else see that though? Oh, you see the same thing? Yeah. Okay, have, uh, yeah. 
Uh, for those who are using Chrome, uh, you can actually check the source code. Like, you can actually check the what the website is. If you can view the source. Uh, so, I mean, the server is automatically just putting some HTML around it for you. Uh, is everyone good with that? Or so, yeah. Make sure that your Yeah, this is actually my fault. I made a typo. Yeah, I know. The code mark should go before the carrot, not after the carrot. Just check for typos. Like everything I So uh, we had a good question. Is everyone good with this? OK, yeah, just check for typos. Everyone was correct. It was just a couple typos. Anyway, uh, so there's a good question from him about can we serve HTML? And obviously, we're dealing with the web, so we're going to want to have to eventually serve HTML, right? So we can. Uh, a simplistic way of doing this would be, well, I'll just show you because I already have this written up. Not that. You can literally just put HTML here, right? So how about we try that? Just copy that. Okay. If you refresh the page now, we're gonna see the same thing because all it is is the same thing, but it's with HTML. But obviously, this is a very simplistic way of doing it, right? Suppose we had an HTML document of like 10,000 characters, for example, right? This could get extremely bulky, and we don't want to put all the HTML within our Python code. So one of the things that Django stresses is the separation of presentation and logic, right? So your actual programming logic and the presentation, the way it looks, should be separated. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to use something called templates. So what a template is is a way is one of the ways you can, it, essentially, it's, it's an object, right? It's an object just like in Python. But it allows you to put two things with it. It allows you to send it some text, either as in the form of a file or just like we did here. And then it allows you to send some context variables. What context variables are, are just a set of variables that we might want to include within our HTML. So for example, when you load up Facebook, right, 
uh, and it generates the HTML, it's going to pull some th things from its server, from it, well, from the database. Uh, for example, your name, right? Uh, who your friends are, and so on. It's going to put them within the HTML. So that's what that allows you to do. So let's take a look at how exactly that works. Um, well, in order to do that, we first want to actually build out, like, we want to put something inside our database, right? So we have something dynamic to actually put inside our templates. So let's leave this alone for a minute. And let's start our own application, right? So I showed you some of the applications that are included. So you can, again, exit out of the server, or you can open up a new tab. But just make sure that you're using the virtual environment. Then go back to where your uh, manage.py file is. Is everyone there? Stay look up when you're when you're there. So. Yeah, just go to the directory where your manage.py file is. Does anyone need help, or is anyone there? Okay, all right, I'm gonna move on, just raise your hand if you, okay, I'm moving on. Um, so now that we're there, we're gonna create a new application, and how you do that is, again, python.manage.py. Oh, oops, yeah, uh, python.manage.py start app, and then the name, so we're gonna call it blog post. Uh, so type that mat, python manage.py start add blog post. And just hit enter. Okay. So now if you type dear if you're on Windows or L or LS if you're on a Unix system, you will see that you now have a new directory called Django blog. Sorry, called blog post. Django blog is the old one. So now let's go into that and see what's been created for us. Okay. So if you go into blog post, you're going to see an admin.py file. Uh, we're going to work with that in a little bit. That's to answer your question from earlier. Um, that's how we're going to let the Django application know that we have some new models later on. Uh, Apps.py, we're not going to worry about today. Uh, migrations, don't worry about that too much, but that's where our database migrations will go. Uh, Models.py, that's what we're going to look at first. Okay, so let's open that up. Uh, again, use your favorite text editor. Oops. Okay. So you, you should see this kind of file. It's just an empty models IPY file. Does everyone see this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was planning on using the whiteboard, but it's kind of blocked anyway, so I'm just going to speak, I guess, and hopefully you guys get an idea of what I'm saying without visuals. Um, so the idea of Django, it's built around this philosophy called model view controller. Actually, you know what, let me pull up a, all right, this is good. Okay, uh, let's zoom in. So I've gone over some of this before. When, someone, when someone's in the web browser, they're going to send a URL. It's going to go to the URL dispatcher, which is what we just wrote. Remember the URL.py file? That is going to go to our view. Remember that function we just wrote? Now that view, it can stop there and it can return there, which is what we did earlier, right? We just return stuff. But that doesn't allow us to create dynamic websites. For dynamic websites, we're going to have to query a database. The point of the model is essentially an interface between your view and your database. So if we didn't have the model, a really naive way we could do this, and in some, some languages, some frameworks, people do do this, is to directly query the SQL. Uh, SQL is the language used to query databases. So have you guys worked with PHP, for example? You'll do this in PHP. You'll directly query. You know what I'm talking about, right? You directly query the database. You write raw SQL. And you can actually do that in Django, but there's, let's think about some of the disadvantages of writing your own SQL code. 
for uh, querying the database. Can someone think of any? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So well, the stuff we're doing with Django today, and in fact, I would say like 80 to 90% of like Django, short of like being an absolute expert, you will never have to write a raw SQL query, um, which is great because that's just one less language you have to deal with. Um, some other advantages are that, for example, um, there are different databases, and for each one, you'd have to write its own like configuration. Uh, and then also, the SQL language can slightly change between types of uh, types of SQL. So Postgres versus MySQL versus we're using SQLite. There can be slight differences. So if you were trying to make something reusable, or if later on you want to change your database and so on, it can get really annoying, right? So Django writes this layer, layer of abstraction, uh, which is the model essentially that allows you to write code that looks like Python, that is but that is Python without the SQL, but still gives you all that functionality that you have with PHP uh, writing raw SQL, for example. So a model in Python is just a class. If you know Python classes, it, it that's what it is. But unlike a regular model, it has a number of functionalities that allow you to write it to a database and then read it again from the database. So that in a normal Python script, when the Python script ends, that's it. You don't have your data anymore. But with this, it saves to a database and it automatically reloads it without you having to really worry about that. So, uh, Oh, I'm just setting this up. You guys don't have to copy this just yet. Uh, you know this stuff. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Just write this. Um, no. Here's your here's your model shell, and we're gonna call it blog post. Actually, you know what? Just call it post. It's easier. Oh yeah, and um, there's a convention of capitalizing Django model names. I would. I, you'll see later why it's it's nice to follow that convention. Okay, so remember we're building a blog, and this model is supposed to represent a post, as the name implies, right? So a single blog post. So think about the things that, like, on the blogs that you read or might have read or heard of. What are some of the things that are associated with, what is some of, what is some of the data that is associated with a blog post? Any ideas? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'm thinking of like core functionality. Comments are nice, but they're not essential for a blog post, right? In fact, many blogs don't have them. Uh, but a title is pretty important, right? Uh, yeah, so any others? Yeah. Sorry? Timestamp. Yeah, okay. So a timestamp is important because you want to know when the blog post writ was written. Uh, anything else? Yeah, the actual content, right? So the text. So those are three uh, fields we can start out with. Uh, simply, so when you're writing an actual, suppose you, for those of you who are familiar with Python, which I think is most of the room, like what, like, don't think of it of it as Django. Suppose you're just writing a class. How would you store a title as a string, right? You just store it as a string, right? The problem is there's no data persistence there. So what Django uh, has created for us is this this file called models that defines a whole bunch of different models with a capital M. Uh, so. That, yeah, that, that's what you see here. So what's happening here, for the, again, for those of you who don't know Python, the class post is inheriting from models.model. .model. That's what that's saying. So within the models file, there's also a bunch of model fields. And model fields are ways of defining data. So they interface with the database. So again, for those of you who know SQL, who know databases, there's different types of data that can live in a database. And this essentially provides a layer of abstraction for you to connect the two. So let's start with the title, right? So um, one of the one of the fields that one of the model fields that exists in Django is called chart field. So it's going to look like this. We're going to call it title. By the way, Sublime uh, it allows you to do those kinds of shortcuts that I just did. If you're using some other editor, you're just going to have to write it out. Title equals to models that chart field uh, and yeah, uh, just max length equals to fifty. So what this is saying is. Um, Again, for those of you, do you know SQL? Yeah. yeah so uh, this would basically translate to like a bar chart. Uh, and then how would you set the, uh, I'm not sure, how would you set uh, length in in SQL? Like if you set a ma max length for a chart field, for just character. Uh, 
Yeah, this, you are using, you, when you, you declaring the attributes, mm -hmm. you the type. Yes. Yeah, There's a way of doing it, right? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the way of doing it in SQL and, sorry? This is something you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is essentially written in Python rather than SQL. And it's going to create, it's going to do all of that for you behind the scenes without you having to worry about that. Does everything I've said so far make sense? Because I know there's a lot to take in. If you guys have any questions, um, there's no questions here. Okay. Yeah, if you guys have any questions uh, or need any help, I'm going to like take a five minute break right now before we proceed. Does anyone need help with anything we've done so far? Any questions? No? Everyone's up to speed? Okay. Um, then I'll just continue. Um, so I've already written this out. Um, so here, copy this and we'll go over in a second what this means. Uh, hopefully that'll make it easier to read. Okay, is everyone up to speed with this? Okay, so let's take a look at this. We already went over what the char field is. Uh, essentially, it's a way of storing characters. Um, you need, so within any model field, uh, we can pass it various arguments. And the arguments are both, there's certain arguments that you can apply to any model field. There's other arguments that you can only apply to specific model fields. Uh, one of them that you can apply to all of them is unique equals, equals true. And that means for any given model object, this has to be unique, right? So you can't have two blog posts with the same title. Does that seem does that seem to make sense, right? So basically, we're saying we don't want blog posts with more than one title, like with the same title. Uh, max length for this only applies for char field, text field, and maybe another field. Um, actually, I think it's just these two. Um, essentially, sets the max length for this. Um, in this case, fifty characters, right? Uh, for text field, we could set a max length. We're choosing not to. Uh, there is an actual limit, I think, set by the database. You probably won't hit it anyway, so don't worry about it. Uh, so that's the text of the actual, actual body of our blog post. And then finally, we're going to have a timestamp. Now, the nature of a timestamp is that, obviously, um, you want it to automatically set to the time that you create the object, right? And we could, in our code, automatically do that every single time, OK? Timestamp equals to date time dot now, which is how you'd write it in Python. Uh, but obviously, we, I mean, that's a lot of overhead. So what we're going to do instead is set this attribute called auto now to true. And this only applies to the very, there's a couple of different model fields that relate to date and time. Date time is one of them. It stores both the date and the time. There's also a date field, which is just the date. And there's also a time field, which is just the time. Um, and it stores this as a date time object. For those of you familiar with Python, you know what that is. But it interfaces with SQL's representation of a, of a, of, well, the database that you're using, it's a representation of, a, of date and time. OK, so for now, this is all we're going to have in our blog post. Any questions on this stuff so far? Yeah. So usually, 
that. Yeah, so good point. Um, so in SQL, in a database, every single um, table is going to need its own primary key, right? So every single, well, a row within a table is going to need a primary key. So with Django, it automatically creates a primary key for you that starts from one and continues counting upwards unless you specifically specify that you should use another field. In this case, we're fine with that for now, right? And a primary key is essentially um, any field where unique, unique equals to true and that has a way of automatically incrementing or changing every single time so you don't end up with duplicate primary keys uh, because that's not allowed by the database. Um, so in this case, it's automatically created for us and we don't have to worry about that. Does that make sense? OK. Any other questions? OK. Mm. Oh, the way it does that, by the way, some, using something called a, um, uses an auto field. Um, so we could actually do this manually. We could write something like this, uh, primary key, and then we could write, oops. This is the way we can do it manually, and it will, don't don't actually do this. There's no point. Um, an auto field is just an auto automatically incrementing field. Starts from one and count up, counts upwards. Primary key equals true. You can set that to any field to say this should be the primary key. But if you do do that, you have to make sure that that field is unique, and that's an additional burden on you, right? And whereas if you just leave it with like the, the default, it'll automatically count up for you. But in some cases, that does make sense. There's some objects, for example, that you might want to identify. Like say you created a user object, you want to identify them by their user ID, and you don't want that to just start from one and count upwards. You want like an eight, eight letter, like an eight letter or eight digit string or something like that. In that case, you would set that to your primary key, but you just have to make sure that every single time, no two user IDs conflict. So we're gonna delete this. Um, that was just for demonstration purposes. Let's go back to our terminal command line. Let's go to where our wherever our um, manage.py file is. Now, whenever you create a new model, you're going to need to change the database schema, right? So you're going to need to change what's in the database. You're going to create new tables and so on and so forth. Now, back in the day, this used to be actually rather difficult in Django. Uh, you have, there's quite a bit of overhead, but they've optimized it quite a bit. So all you have to, have to really do is Python manage.py uh, first make migrations. So remember earlier we just did migrate. That works on the first time you start up a project, but now you're going to need to do make migrations. Uh, oh, oops, um, hold on. It says no changes detected because remember how I said when we were talking about the settings.py file? You need to add, every single time you create a new app, you need to add the name of the app to install the app. So I did that here. This is a different, uh, so you need to do the same. That's for a different project, though. So give me a second. Yeah, OK. So go to your uh, settings.py file, find installed apps, and at the end, add the name of the, the application we just created, which I called a blog post, maybe called it something else. Trailing comma is optional. Um, yeah, okay. So that's why I did detect it. That's how you tell Django, okay, these, these are where all, all the places where my models are. So we made our initial migration earlier. Uh, it had already searched these. Now when we run make migrations, it's going to make the migrations files. All the migrations file is, by the way, is just, it's literally just Python code. Uh, you can look, you can actually find a directory. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a .py file in your migrations directory, and it's going to say certain things about how, how to update the database. Uh, for, I'd say, like, the majority of, like, common use cases, you won't ever have to edit your own migrations files. But as you get to more advanced uh, edits, for example, if you delete a bunch of files, if you change stuff around, if you change the type of model field, stuff like that, you're going to have to actually write manual migrations. That's not something we go over today, though. So let's do that. So it says here, uh, migrations for blog posts, that's the name of the model we just did. It's going to create this file you can actually find in the migrations directory of the blog post application. And it's saying what it did. It created model post, which is what we did, right? And then now that, we, now that it's actually created, we're going to do migrate. So run python manage.py migrate. 
and it actually runs that Python code and updates the database accordingly. So every time you make changes, you yeah. That just updates the database schema. Okay. So is everyone on, on the same page? Yes. What, what if we do in settings? Yeah, settings.py, you want to go to, uh, hold on. You want to go to where it says installed apps and add blog post and quotes at the end, like this. Okay. Everyone's good? All right, cool. Um, so now let's run our server again, and we're going to visit this time the admin page. Oh, first, uh, you know what? Hold on. Don't run the server yet. What we're going to do is uh, Python manage.py create super user. So Django comes, again, this is part of the batteries included philosophy, it comes with a authentication framework. So you don't have to deal with a lot of that. It's also very customizable, and also you can override it if you want to. So uh, one of the commands in manage.py is create super user, and that allows you to create like the root user that has all permissions. So the, the default Django user, it, it's a model. It's, they've just written it themselves. And it comes with a set of permissions, things that it can and can't do. When you create a super user, as the name implies, it has all permissions. So let's do that. When you run that, it's going to ask you for a username. Just enter something. Just remember it. It's going to ask you for an email address. Again, these are all fields that are like when the people who wrote Django, they wrote a model called user, and then they added fields for a username, for an email address, and so on. Those are all things that uh, you can do yourself if you don't think their, their authentication framework is adequate. And then set a password. It's not going to show, so don't be confused by that. That's just how passwords work in the command line. And it's going to ask you that again. Okay, super, it should say super user created successfully once that works. Does everyone have their super user set up? Okay. Now that we have our super user, boot up your server again. Again, Python manage.py run server. And go to, you're going to go to that link and then slash admin. And then it's going to just enter your super user login and password. So when you go to that, you'll see um, how your admin site is organized is you're going to have the, these blue sections that are the name of the application. So they've called their default, uh, it's called auth, by the way. Uh, that's just the name of the, the Django module. But they've, they've given an English name, authentication authorization. You can do the same for your own Django models. You'll see that it has groups and users. What you, you'll also see is that you don't have your own posts that we just wrote there. That's because you have to let it know that we created a we created it and register it with the admin site. And the way we're going to do that is if we go again into our blog post uh, directory, you're going to see a file called admin.py. And let's open that up. Yeah, the servers, uh, server automatically re, uh, restarts. You never have to worry about it. I think there's a couple of cases where it'll crash, but that's very rare. So anyway, you go ahead and put this right there, and uh, and then you're going to write an import line, sorry, from import, well, models dot. OK, so all we're doing is we're importing post. Actually, you know what, um, from models import. So we're importing posts and then we're writing uh, when registering with the admin site. So if you do that and you reload this page, it should show up there. Uh, in your admin.py file, you want to import it from dot models. So dot just means same directory. Actually, I think you might be able to do this. Yeah, no, hold on. Yeah, you can. Okay, so from dot models import posts. And then uh, admin.site.register post. So the reason we have to do this is because you can customize your admin site functionality. And then if you want to do that, you have to write your own class and register that class instead. But in this case, we are comfortable with that, what the admin site gives us, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to customize it. We're just going to write this. If you go into your admin site, now you have a place where you can add posts. 
So I want to wait a few minutes because I think some people are still getting up to speed. Um, Are you guys there? Okay. All right. Um, can you can you raise your hand if you're not? You need a minute. So I'm gonna move on. Otherwise, oh, you need a minute. Yeah. Uh, can you help him out? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, we finished at eight thirty. Yeah. Do you need to go or? Okay. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to continue. Um, so let's add a post. If you click add post, this will come up. You'll notice that the date time is not the date and the time is not actually there because we set it to auto now equals true. So it does. It's obviously not going to show up there, right? Because it's automatically set to the time that we click save. So let's create a call. I mean, title whatever you want. My first post. I'm going to write hello world. I'm going to save it. You'll see it was saved successfully, and you'll see it there. Well, you notice right now the title it shows here is just post object. We can customize that, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, so that's all good, right? But remember, like when I started this, I said our eventual goal should be for all the posts to show up here in the list. Yeah. What does it say? Uh, it's my guess is probably you didn't run your migration properly for whatever reason. Um, is anyone else having an issue? Both of you? Yeah. After you do the create migrations, you just want another command, Python SFTY might be. You got that? Because create migrations just creates a Python file that describes migrations. The migrant is an active process. Okay. The only time you don't want to create migrations is this one right here is the first time. Okay. After that, you can run it to the other. Now, for those of you who worked with like PHP, for example, the way you do in PHP is that you're literally writing PHP code within your HTML that you're going to serve to the user, right? So remember how I said earlier that Django set like one of the, the core aspects of Django philosophy is that you separate your business logic or your like your code from your presentation logic, so what the user sees, right? So to that, but at the same time, obviously you're going to want to put certain things from Python, like from your database and so on, into the HTML. So the way we're going to use that, the way we're going to do that is using Django's template language. Uh, template language. It's a very robust framework that allows, that essentially allows 
a very small set, I mean, small but powerful set of commands that allow you to do things like as you would in code, but without actual Python. So I'll show you what that means in just a second. Well, actually, hold on. let's go to reviews.py file. Remember what we wrote earlier? You're going to paste, well, you're going to copy, you're going to write over it. This is what you should have. Actually, give me a second. Let's explain what this means in a second, but just try to copy that over first. Uh, this stuff doesn't change. Oh, you want to import something. Hold on. From Django dot shortcuts import render. Okay. So everyone copy that? Just to look up when you're done, so you know. Okay, it looks like most people have copied it, so I'm just going to go over what this says. Uh, actually, you can delete this import now if you want to, or you can save it. It doesn't really matter because we're not using it anymore. Okay, so Django, because, again, batteries included, includes a, a whole bunch of shortcuts for common things in this in this Python file called Django. In, I said this right here. Okay, it's a Python file, Django shortcuts. includes a bunch of functions that you are, are likely to use a lot. One of them is render. Render takes a number of arguments and returns an HTTP response object. Remember, the view function always has to return an object that's an HTTP response object, okay? So what it does, uh, the, first, the first thing it takes is the request, okay? That's passed to you again. It's passed to you, it's passed to your view, so you're just gonna pass it on again. Then it takes the name of your template. Now the template in this case is going to be another file that we're gonna write, and it's usually an HTML file. Uh, and that's going to describe uh, essentially all that HTML that we just put into our Python code earlier is going to be in this file instead. And then it's going to take a dictionary. For those who are familiar with Python, this is a data structure called a dictionary. It's familiar with, uh, it's, it's similar to a Java map, if you know Java instead. It essentially maps keys to values. So here we've mapped this string to this value. I'll explain what that, var uh, that value is in a second. So what this, what, what this is, is essentially your context variables. Um, and those are things that you can now insert into your template. And I'll show you what that means in a second once you see the template. But let's go over what post is. Now remember how I said that post, remember we wrote a model called post, right? And it's a way of interfacing with our database. Uh, so say you wanted to get all the objects in the database that are posts. Well, Django has this very uh, convenient tool, it's called the ORM, the Object Relational Model, and it essentially relates things in the database to your models. Uh, and the way, like, one way to do that is, okay, so to, when you just do post.objects, you get a, you get this, essentially this object that, that you can do different things with. Uh, and so one of the things you can do is dot .all, uh, and dot .all just returns all of them, essentially as a list. Um, 
So when you do this, essentially this is saying get all the posts in the in the database and store them as a Python list. That's what it's doing right here. And then you're passing that list on to your template via using the render function in the in, through this dictionary. Now blog posts is the name is how you're going to treat the variable name within the template. So if we let's create a new file that's going to actually be our template. Uh, that's just going to be HTML right now, but here. Actually, ignore that for a second. Don't use that. Let's use this. Okay, let's save this. Copy this down. This is just a HTML shell. Uh, is everyone here like more or less familiar with HTML? Yeah. Is anyone not? You're not. Okay, so what this is doing, uh, HTML is, it's, are you familiar with XML at all? No, okay. Uh, so essentially, HTML is written as tags. Um, so this is a tag right here. This just says this document is HTML. You open the whole document with an HTML tag and you close it. A closing tag has this, like a backslash, and then a B, a opening tag obviously doesn't. Um, your head is just describing some metadata about the document. For example, a title, that's what shows up. You know when you open a tab and it says in the tab? Uh, what the website name is, that's what title is. Uh, a header, just here, let's just do that and you'll see how it looks and I think it'll make more sense. Uh, and where you're gonna save this is, go into your Django Hactorial, um, not that, Django blog, okay. You're gonna create a new folder called templates. You're gonna save it inside there and name it uh, homepage.html. So I wrote UBS blog here because, I mean, just you can write whatever. It's just HTML right now. So just write whatever. Uh, it's in temp Django blog slash templates. So in the root directory of your Django project, you're going to create a new folder called templates and then save it inside there. It actually doesn't matter as long as you tell the settings.py file where to, where to find the templates. But this is how I'm doing it. And that's like, this is the way most people do it. It's just a convention. Yeah, in the in your root directory, essentially. Okay, those are copying can continue. I'm just going to uh, show you the next step. In settings.py, you're going to need to, it's just HTML, so like if you, you know, just write whatever. You don't have to type exactly what I did, especially because we're gonna delete almost all of this anyway in a few minutes. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, okay. It's on the right, you can copy it. Um, on the left, if you go back to settings.py file, now we have to tell um, our, our Django project where to find Templates. So, okay. so you're going to find a list in a, uh, somewhere about halfway through your settings at PY file called templates. It's going to have a bunch of stuff. All this is is just telling Django how to process the templates. Uh, what you care about is Deers right here. So, in Deers is essentially a list of where to search 
for your template views. And we're going to write this again using os.path.join like we did earlier with uh, static files. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, all right, here it is. Uh, is everyone done with the HTML, by the way? Okay. Uh, so this is just going to tell where to search. So this is saying go to the base directory, the root directory, and join with templates. So it's going to search within templates of the root directory. So now let's try this out. We're going to uh, open up your – run your server again and refresh the page. Oops. Give me a second. Oh, yeah, go back to your uh, views.py file. Post here, we didn't import it, so we need to do that again. Um, so what, because we added the name of our application to apps in settings uh, settings.py, we don't need to do it like we don't need to import it by going up like two directories and then back with down one. Instead, what we can do is just write from uh, we called it hold on yeah from our posts. Okay, so we called it a uh, blog post. Okay, from blog post dot models import post. So just add that to your uh, models that you file. Otherwise, we can't re reference it. Then refresh the page again. So you'll see this. Now you'll note that we've passed these context variables to the template, but here we're not actually doing anything with them, right? So all we're seeing is just HTML. But now the HTML is no longer living within our Python code. It's in a separate file. So we've separated the business from the presentation. Does that make sense? Are there any questions before I move on? Yeah. Yeah, so did you add, like, that's just what I just did. You need to add this line to the top of your models.py file. Oh, sorry, views.py file. And you saved the file? What do you need to see there? Oh yeah, uh huh. So that's the same thing as we did with static gears, except you're gonna do. The reason we're adding this, this is especially important for Windows people, because the way Windows does file extensions is completely different from the way Unix systems do it. So that's just for compatibility reasons. Uh, because I am running Linux, I wouldn't need to do that if I only ever did Linux dev, but say I was working with a team of people and some of them were doing, using Windows, I'd need that. But if, if you don't really care, you can just remove this last part. I would say just keep it, just really no loss. Done. Um, I just have you to go, but like actually putting these context variables inside the template that's probably kind of the meat of this. I'm going to do that now. Um, so, is everyone ready so I can do that? It shouldn't take more than five minutes if you like need to go.
So everyone's good? Okay, all right. So the way we did this, obviously we didn't have any actual, we didn't actually use those context variables. So Django's template rendering engine is being sent these vari this variable, but it's not actually doing anything because we didn't ask it to. So what we're gonna do is actually make it do something with that. And, well, hold on. Yeah. So, I've got to replace this. Uh, you can ignore the stuff about static files. Just delete that here. Okay, so just copy this. Most of the stuff is the same, but you'll note that here I've changed this. I've added this instead of what we had before. So just copy that, and I'll explain what that does in a second. Is everyone going to copy that? You shouldn't need to copy the whole thing because most of it is the same. It's just you're replacing the, the body here. Is everyone good? Okay. So uh, this is the last step. Uh, once I explain this, um, that should be good um, to go. Anyway, so what is happening here is the Django template engine provides a number of different tags and uh, tags to essentially to allow you to do stuff in your in your HTML to generate dynamic HTML depending on what you feed it. So one of those things is a for loop. You guys are probably very familiar with for loops from other like programming languages. Obviously, this isn't a programming language; it's a templating language, but the syntax is similar. So whenever you're doing this, you have to put the you have to open it with a bracket and a and a um, and a percent sign, and then close it with a percent sign and then a bracket. And then when you end the forward loop, you're going to do the same thing. So, I mean, the syntax is pretty transparent. For post in blog posts. Now, blog posts, as you'll recall, was uh, in our views.py file. In our views.py file, remember we passed it this variable called blog posts. And the value of that was this, post, which is all of the posts in our, in our database. So for each of those, it's going to, okay, so this is just HTML. There's nothing special there. Now, the diff, now this is for template tags, like for loops, and there's a whole bunch of template tags. You guys can look them up. 
uh, on the on the in the Django documentation online. Uh, when you just do double braces, those are variables. So if you just want to do the variable, then you do double brace. So now you have post, so post.title and post.text. So if you have this, let's look up. Let's load up our page, and this is what it should look like. Does everyone see that? So if we go back to our admin site, actually, um, you can add more blog posts. So let's try that. Let's add a new one. Uh, my second post. Save that. We go back here and refresh it. Shows up there. Now the cool thing with it, I mean, well, I've only got, I've gone over basically just two things you can do with the Django template language, but there's a whole bunch you can do. Um, and I encourage you guys, and actually everything I've talked about today, there's a whole, whole bunch more out there that you can do. Um, I'd encourage you guys to visit the Django documentation. It's probably one of the most extensive, uh, extensively documented, well-documented web frameworks out there. Uh, it'll actually spoil you for like other language frameworks. If you work with, for example, various PHP frameworks or Ruby on Rails, they're not nearly as well-documented. Um, and that's, you can find it at docs.djangoproject.com. Uh, and then this is just the latest version, but if you just type this, it'll automatically put that in for you. So you can see uh, stuff here on the side and so on. Um, so, for example, table of contents. If you wanted to set uh, what we were just talking about, um, so if you go to templates, you can see some stuff, other stuff they can do. So, for example, this is what we just talked about variables, um, various tags, and so on. Okay, so that's it. Um, so, what do you mean? The templating language? So Django is specifically for Python, yes. Django is written in Python. Um, we're probably going to have another one of these next week around this time. Uh, that's going to be a lot more advanced. Um, this one was meant for beginners and also people with a little experience with Django. But next week is probably going to be advanced. So I encourage you to come to that. Just If you're on the event page, you'll hear about it. Uh, and I'll be here for like another 10 minutes if you have any questions.